how did being the quote unquote dyslexic kid and I understand you had to take, you know, special ed classes. Yeah. All you know, the way through high school. All the way through high school. Well, from middle school to high school, yeah. So talk for a second about how, okay, I, I was the kid in special ed classes. I was the kid that was labeled as dyslexic. How did you morph into where you are now? And, I mean, part of the reason why I wanted to have this conversation with you is because I feel like someone who's in your position now, who's this stud athlete, you know, confident, sure of yourself, you have so much, <laughs> <laughs> you have a lot going for you at this point. What advice do you have to that kid who is still in eighth grade taking special ed classes and doesn't see the path forward? I <clears throat> I knew what I wanted to do when I was young. I, I was fortunate in that a lot of people, a lot of people my age still don't know what they want to do. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? A lot of 23 year olds don't know what they want to do with their life. I say to you that if you know what you want to do, if you know what your calling is at a young age, like I did, that that's it. Mm -hmm. You got to do it. You got to do it. And you've got to do everything in your power uh, to get there. And I mean everything. I, I didn't have my first drink of alcohol until I was 22 years old. I didn't, I, I've never been invited to a party mm -hmm. in, in, in school. I've never yeah. been invited to a party just because everybody knew I didn't drink. Everybody, and I was that socially awkward, socially awkward kid. But like, I knew what I wanted to do. I, I don't want to be in the UFC. I wanted to be world champion. And I would tell everybody who'd listen that one day I was gonna be world champion. You have a socially awkward kid in special ed, mm -hmm. doesn't quite know how to present himself to other people yet, saying that he wants to be a UFC world champion someday. I got picked on a lot for that too. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, so how do you get through that? Honestly, it's weird. I knew, and to this day, I know that I'm going to be the next big thing or a, a big deal or world champion. I, I just knew back then, like, I was like, I've got problems. I've got issues, social issues. I got, I don't got a whole lot of friends, but that's okay because I know that I'm going to do this. And there wasn't anybody, uh, I had my special ed teachers telling me like, yeah, let's, you know, let's talk about that. That's yeah, fine that you can do. Our yeah, world but, but, talk. but the thing was, the thing was that they'd never once said, don't do it. They yeah. just said, let's look at backup plans. Um, well, that's good. I think I'm the only person that, that thinks this. I've never met anybody else who thinks like me, but uh, I don't believe in backup plans. Yeah. I don't, I think that you should give 100% to what you want to do. So if tomorrow, Adrian Diaz, blows my knee out and I can never fight again, that's okay. Mm -hmm. I will find out what I wanna do, but I would rather give my entire life up until something happens to becoming successful in this than, than to have a fallback plan, than to you know, have something on the side that takes my attention away from it, even just a little bit. Yeah. Like I have to be 100% focused on becoming a world champion and that's what makes me different. What's this, what is this, moment mean to you and not to be too cheesy but like what's this moment mean to you and what do you say to 13 year old 14 year old grant like like if you could go back and talk to yourself at that point i mean the juxtaposition like i just feel like the juxtaposition of these two things is just nuts you know and it's it's amazing and that's why i wanted to have this conversation every what would you say every single person from my school is behind me 100%. They say they've always known. They didn't, but they're behind me 100%. Even Professor X, the, the bad kid, the yeah. kid who picked on me all the time, you know, like he, he messaged me one day and, and told me he was, you know, all for me and all that. And I was a little bitter at the time, so. Yeah. But I'm past that. Like, I'm past him. I'm, I, you know what I mean? It's, I get so much love from these guys, and there's no sweeter taste than proving people wrong. Like, you say that all the time. Oh, I'm just going to prove them wrong. I'm going to prove them wrong. Man, I've done you it. You actually did. I've done it. Yeah, you you know what it. I mean? Even if no matter what happens, I've done it. Like, yeah. I mean, I've seen the, the star athletes, the, all the star athletes from my school, every single one of them, 
they're not athletes anymore. Yeah. Uh, I was the most unathletic kid. I'm the most unathletic athlete I've ever met. But back in high school, I was the most unathletic, pers- unathletic person on the planet. Like, and all those guys, like, I, I'm Are you a, proud of yourself? Yeah. Yeah. But, but I'm not done. Like, I, I know this is what sets me apart is the UFC isn't enough. Like, I will not be one of those guys that gets in the UFC and says, I had two fights in the UFC. What have you done? I will be the guy that gets into the UFC and takes off. That's it. There, there is no amount of money. There is no amount of fame or success that I can gain through this that, won't, that will make it a, an accomplishment to me unless I hold a world title for one night. That's all I want is a world title for one night greatest night ever there's not a single drug or alcohol or or cigarettes there's no chemical on this planet that can make me feel as good as I do when I win a fight now imagine winning a world title against the best fighter in the world there's just I know there's nothing out there that can make me feel as good as I'll feel and that's why I fight I'm I'm excited I'm just getting started I'm excited for you tomorrow's a big night it is, but I was telling my mom this earlier, we were having lunch, and uh, it all feel like this all, I mean, the interviews, the being in this hotel, this casino, like, it all feels natural. It all feels like I'm supposed to be here. None of this feels yeah. like, I don't get starstruck. You know, I've met Justin Gaethje, I've met all those guys, whatever. I don't get starstruck easy, and... Um, this all just feels natural. This feels like, because since I was 15 years old and I made the decision that I wanted to do MMA for the rest of my life, or you know what I mean, yeah. I, I wanted that to be my career, I've imagined it in my head. I've imagined these interviews. This, this is all natural to me because I've <laughs> gone through it a thousand times and I knew, like I said, I knew it was going to happen. And I, it is. And this is just a stepping stone. I'm on the Contender Series. A lot of people, that's a... That's an accomplishment. And everybody back home is super excited that I'm on the Contender Series. But, guys, this is just the beginning. Like, and then I'm going to get in the UFC. And then I'm going to win X amount of fights. And then I'm going to get ranked. And then I'm going to start just demolishing people. And then we're going to talk about world titles. Do I get to interview you, Dan? Absolutely. Okay, good. All right. Cheers. <laughs> Sounds good. Best of luck tomorrow night. Thank you. Thank I you appreciate it. Thank you for taking a second to talk with me. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Yeah, let's okay, eat these nachos. Right. Let's eat these nachos.